Can you believe it? It's time for Sunday school again. It just seems like yesterday it was Sunday school. But no, another Sunday school and welcome. I hope you've had a good weekend so far. We're continuing our, uh, our study of the Enochian system out of Enochian vision magic. And uh, it just occurred to me that with all of this crossover, uh, Kabbalah-based crossover between Enochian and uh, the tarot and, and uh, Kabbalistically based magic, that uh, I've got uh, a lot of Enochian material, very uh, basic Enochian material actually, uh, in my book, uh, uh, The Terror of Ceremonial Magic, uh, that goes with the cards. I actually call this kind of my uh, uh, desert island book, because uh, when I travel, sometimes uh, I just carry my deck of cards in this book uh, here for my magical uh, uh, one source textbook, because it has all of the uh, information on the Goetia, including uh, the descriptions of all the spirits and the triangles and stuff. And it's got all of the Enochian material, both etheric and, and uh, elemental, uh, besides talking about tarot. So uh, this is my old original copy from G way back when I suppose this was uh, this came out in 1995 so but anyway we are on we are continuing and we've gotten to the point of where we're talking about Duquette's protocol for Enochian vision magic uh, so are you ready Constance is just coming home on her bicycle, so there may be a little, little interruption here. But anyway. The lower the angel you wish to contact uh, in the hierarchy of the elemental tablet, the more superior angels there are above it who must be named and addressed. Therefore, for our example, I'll use... Adre, A-D-R-E, a lowly servant angel found in the arms, under the arms of the Calvary cross of the fire subangle of the elemental tablet of fire. Okay, so here's the elemental tablet of fire. Here's the fire subangle. Now remember what we said yesterday that when we're uh, dealing with the native subangle of a tablet, like fire of fire, or if this is a water tablet, it'd be the water of fire, or the air tablet, it'd be the air of fire. When we're dealing with the native subangle of uh, an elemental tablet, we need only uh, recite one Enochian call to activate both the entire tablet and the subangle we're working with. When we're working with a non-native subangle of an elemental tablet, say if I was uh, going to be working with the, the water subangle of this uh, elemental tablet of fire, I would need two uh, Enochian calls to open it up. One to activate the entire board and another specific one, and I've got a list of them, uh, to open up the non-native subangle. So. The guy we're working on, as our example here, is found under the arms of the Calvary Cross. There's the Calvary Cross right here. Right here. This guy right here. A D R E. That being said, there's a version in English that I've got right here on my Ace of Wands. There's our Calvary Cross of the Fire of Fire subangle, and there you see A-D-R-E. 
that's our, going to be our example today. So that's the fire of fire sub angle. So that would also be the knight or the king of wands. And then you can see it even clearer there. See the Calvary cross and the horizontal arm. And right under that is A, D, R, E. If you want, you can pronounce that, that central letter that's uh, uh, shared with the other divine name of the Calvary Cross, the vertical uh, arm. Uh, I know magicians that uh, utilize the shared letters and some that don't. Preliminaries, number one. Before embarking on any formal magical operation, it's helpful, indeed necessary, to feel good about oneself. Therefore, I always recommend that the magician first bathe, dress in clean clothing, and operate in a clean and uncluttered space. It's also wise to formally purify and banish the area before operating. These preliminary ceremonies can be as simple or as elaborate as you feel necessary. I always begin with a simple lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram that I've customized to reflect my own taste and spiritual proclivity. A classic version of the pentagram ritual can be found at the beginning of Appendix 1 of this book. I next perform the ceremony of preparation that is outlined in Chapter 1 and Appendix 1 of this book. That's with the holy table opening and stuff. We'll get to that again. I consider this ritual an Enochian magic temple opening par excellence. I believe it serves to purify, banish, and consecrate both the temple and the magician in a manner that is in harmony with the universe as perceived by the Enochian angels. It also establishes and sanctifies the magical environment for the black mirror or scrying stone. Next step, the call or calls. A complete list of the angels of all four elemental tablets together with their traditional duties can be found in Appendix 4 of this book. In order to contact any angel from an elemental tablet, one need first activate the tablet by intoning the proper call or calls in the Enochian tongue. The calls and the key to their use can be found in Appendix 2 of this book. Now, it may seem like I've done all the work for you. And indeed, I've done a shitload of work for you. But make no mistake about it, I can't do your magic for you. So as hard as I worked and for as many years that I've poured in to making appendix, appendices and graphs and charts to, to make it at least easier for you, the hard work of magic, especially Enochian magic, is, is done by you. So. Only one call is necessary if you target angel, if your target angel resides in the Great Central Cross. Okay, we know what that is, the Great Central Cross. One of the three great secret names of God, or a senior or a king. Also, only one call is necessary if your target angel resides in the native subangle of the elemental tablet. As example, the fire subangle of the fire tablet, like we're going to talk about today, the water subangle of the water tablet, 
heir of Erd, Erthever. But if your target angel resides in a non-native subangle, as example, the earth subangle uh, of the water tablet or, or the air subangle of the fire tablet, you must also recite an additional call assigned specifically to that subangle. Our target angel, Adre, A D R E, resides in the native subangle, the fire subangle of the fire tablet. So we will need only recite the sixth call. See Appendix 2. Reciting the sixth call switches on the elemental tablet of fire, as it were, and puts it in a standby mode to await more specific actions of the magician. Step 3. Addressing the hierarchy. After the call, whether you feel it or not, your recitation of the sixth call has put you in an altered state of consciousness. Now, when I say whether you feel it or not, it's because when you're dealing with states of consciousness, it's not always apparent that your consciousness has shifted. I remember the very, very first time when I was like uh, uh, 17 years old and I came out to California and my brother says, you've got to try this mar marijuana. And I thought, oh, I don't know. And he says, no, it's, it's, you feel so groovy, you know. And so he rolled the thinnest, I mean, it was mostly paper, okay, the, the thinnest joint. And he taught me how to, how to smoke it. And uh, we smoked the whole thing. And uh, I swore I didn't feel a thing. I said, what's supposed to happen? I, I can't feel anything, you know. And he's over there going, oh, man, this is so groovy. I just want to live, listen to some Miles Davis. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and I said, you know, I don't know what the big thing is. I don't, I don't feel anything. But whatever it is, I felt like this before. It's so big deal. And it was only after three or four times of doing that that I realized, now wait. My consciousness is different than it was when, than when I first... You're so close to yourself that you don't realize when your self has shifted. So, reciting the Nelkian call, whether you feel it or not, your recitation of the call has altered your state of consciousness. Magically speaking, you are now present within the environment of the elemental tablet of fire. You have awakened the spiritual forces of the tablet, and they're waiting to see if you are worthy of their attention. If you can convince the spirits of the tablet that you know where you are and how you got there, they will acknowledge you as a natural citizen of their well-ordered magical universe. Once you've established rapport with its superiors, the target angel will have no choice but to be compliant and ready to open its mysteries to you. You prove your worthiness by remembering your manners and addressing by name the angels who reign over your target angel. In the case of the servient angel like Audrey, 
The hierarchy is essentially the whole cast of characters. Starting at the top, we have the supreme name from the Tablet of Union. In the case of fire, it's Bitom. Next, well, first of all, there's Ottery right there. That's who we're shooting for. Then we address Bitom. Then we address the three great secret names of God. Remember those guys? Oip, Ti'a, and Podeke. Then the name of the elemental king. That guy. It'll pair now. Then the names of all six planetary seniors. Those guys. They, they ray out from the right to the left, top to the bottom like that. And their names are Eit Pio. A do e et al duaud ap decor ar inap ano duan. Then the first god name off of your elemental tablet, Riz Ionar. And with the name Riz Ionar, you compel the god name Nirzifum. And then those guys are all the boss of Audrey. And it took only one Enochian call to get you in the mood and to get you into the environment to do that. In this case, for fire and fire of fire, that's the sixth Enochian call. If the target angel is higher on the hierarchical ladder, there are a few names to include in your little speech. For example, to call a senior, you need only use steps one two, and three before calling on the name of the target senior. If your target angel is the king of the elemental tablet, you only have to use the names in steps one and two. And what about the Kerubic angels, who, as we learned earlier, have separate a separate hierarchy that skips the god names of the subangle? In the case of the fire, Subangle of the elemental tablet of fire, simply replace the name in step five with the god name of the carob. In this case, that would be Piziza. And replace the name in step three with the name of the carob. That would be either Ziza, Izaz, Zazi, or Azziz. Step four, calling your target angel. Repeat out loud the name of the target angel several times. State why you have called it, ask your question, and or make your requests. Then sit quietly and scry. If necessary, repeat the call to induce a deeper state of mind. If you wish, have a tape recorder running and describe your visions as it unfolds. Don't tire yourself. Conclude your visionary business 
at the first signs of fatigue. Thank the angel and formally close the session with a banishing ritual of your choice. Step five, write it all down. Immediately transcribe everything into your magical journal. I mean, everything. The date, the time, the weather conditions, astrological aspects if you know them and care about such things. Even if you think there is nothing to report, write that down along with your thoughts of why things might not have worked. Here's a sample of a hierarchical invocation. The invocation below is what I currently use to acknowledge and invoke the hierarchy of the elemental tablet. I'll provide uh, the English translation of it first so that you'll know what it's saying. You may easily customize your own by referencing to an Enochian dictionary. Yes, there's Enochian dictionaries. With the elemental tablet before me, I utter each angel's name and wave my wand over the squares that spell it. Here would be the English translation of the, uh, of the thing. Let me see if I can customize it for Arn. Uh, well, I invoke and move thee, O thou spirit, in our case, uh, uh, Audre. And being exalted above you in the power of the Most High, I say unto you, come forth and obey. In the name of, and then uh, from the uh, from the Tablet of Union, in the name of Batum, in the name of the three great secret names of God, in our case, Oip, Taa, and Podeke, in the names of the of the King of the Elemental Tablet, Edelperna, in the names of the tongue twisting six sen <laughs> seniors, then do all of those. Uh, in the name of the uh, God of the Calvary Cross. Uh, and then in the name of as many of the hierarchical ones that you need to do, I invoke and move thee, O thou spirit, Adre. Okay, basically the translation is, I invoke and move thee, O thou spirit, Adre. Ulvenu odzakam ilzge, Adre. And being exalted above you in the power of the Most High, I say unto you, come forth and obey. Odlanch uh, vorji iad, kohus pujo ils niso od darbs. And in the name of is the oyap, and then uh, be the oyap betom the oyap. Uh, Oip Tie Padoche, Odo Oyap Eloperna, Odo Yap Eip Pio, Od Adi Yot, Od Alandud, Od Aapadeke, Od Arinap, Od Anodoin. And then the Calvary Cross deities, uh, Odo Oyap. Rizniar Odoyap Nirzifim. Then uh, I uh, I invoke and move thee, O thou spirit, Adre, Ulvenu Odzakam Ilzga Adre. Okay, let's see if there's anything left to do. No. That's the end of the chapter. Tomorrow, we'll pick up a new week. And uh, chapter 28, now we'll talk about the 30 Aethers and the Aetheric workings. I know it's uh, kind of a long class today, but uh, I hope I've given you some food for thought. 
believe me, it's almost easier just to do it than it is to talk about doing it or describing how to uh, how to do it. It is really uh, uh, more straightforward than you you might imagine. But anyway, Sunday school class is out for the day. You can go out to the church parking lot and smoke. <laughs> okay, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Have a great weekend, everyone. Do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.